Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. In this one we're taking a look at the Twin Blades, Dark Souls 2. So let's get right into it. First up, the Sorcerer's Twin Blade. There are a couple of weapons in this game that you can cast spells with. This is one of them. You get this one in the Crown of the Ivory King DLC, in one of the chests that are melted. You have to defeat Ava the King's Pet to get it. It upgrades with a regular Titanite, up to plus 10. And you can cast both spells and hexes. So this Twin Blade has counter damage, which probably means you get counter damage on your spells as well. However, I did test it against a couple of staffs and of course it didn't do much more damage than a normal staff, but it is an extra utility that you can use for this thing. Now the Twin Blade class tends to have pretty high durability because they swing so fast and hit so many times. This thing does have the lowest though at 100. It weighs 10 units, has 15 poise break, which is also a little bit low for the class. 120 counter damage, and with my stats at 50 strength and dex, as well as 20 intelligence and faith, I am doing 250 damage with this twin blade. I wouldn't say this is one of the best ones for just outright damage, because of course it does split damage. You could buff this thing with either magic or dark. There are a couple of staffs and weapons that do magic and dark damage. However, I don't feel like that's very good, because if you think about your stats, right, in order to do more damage with sorcery, you have to level up intelligence. But in order to do more damage with hexes, you have to level up both intelligence and faith. So of course, if you are a full-blown sorcerer, you should probably pick a staff that levels up better with just one stat. Now, because twin blades are best when you hold them in both of your hands, and you can cast spells with this thing when you have it in both of your hands, there may be scenarios where you definitely want to do that. However, I would say that a staff accompanied with this thing is probably the best way to use it. Now, let's take a look at the next one. So here we go, the Twin Blade. You can get this in an Iron Chest in the Lost Bastille. This thing weighs 8 units, has 210 durability, 25 points break, which is pretty crazy, 120 counter damage, and at 50 strength and dex, I was doing 316. So these weapons, like I mentioned, are really good when you two-hand them, because the moveset goes absolutely insane. I would not really say that the one-handed moveset is that great. Maybe there is some utility in PvP for roll catching and stuff, but for PvE, the two-handed moveset is what you want to use. So they don't have a lot of reach, but they poise break like crazy and they hit a bunch of times. So one of the best ways to use this weapon is to poison things. Infusing with a poison stone will decrease its damage significantly, but I don't think these weapons are really meant to do that much damage. There are better weapons for that. However, you can certainly poise break and do a bunch of poison damage on the boss or, or enemies. This twin blade takes 26 dexterity to use, which is pretty high, and 14 strength. And yeah, overall, it's pretty fun to use them. When you do the R1 attack and then you quickly follow it up with an R2, the R2 comes out even quicker. And one strategy that you can use is if the enemy is out of your reach, you do a couple of R1s followed by the R2 because your character takes a step forward, closing the distance between you and the enemy. There is another great weapon in this class for that, but we'll get to that one. Let's go to the next one. So this Twin Blade is probably my second favorite in this class. However, the way to get it is kind of difficult. You have to get to rank 1 of the Dark Brotherhood of Blood Covenant. In order to get it, you need to have won 50 more times than you have lost, essentially, in a row in the Dark Brotherhood of Blood Covenant. So it can be a little bit difficult to obtain. The way I got it in particular is I went to Chancellor Welliger in NG plus two, and he sells it. Chancellor Welliger does sell a bunch of weapons and spells once you get to NG plus two that can be a little bit difficult to obtain through their corresponding covenants. But this thing comes with bleed on it, which makes it really nice, so see why. It weighs 10 units, has 125 durability, 25 poise, 110 counter damage. I have mine infused with poison, and at 50 strength and dex, I was doing 240 damage. These twin blades have the potential to poison enemies extremely quickly, and like I've mentioned, they poise break very well too. So enemies will basically just be stagger locked while being poisoned. It, it is great to use in that way. Now, because this one comes with bleed, I decided to infuse it with poison so that I can inflict both status effects, and I did find that it wasn't too bad to use in that way. Now I have to say the way to get this weapon is pretty steep, so that's a real unfortunate thing, but it is really cool nonetheless. It looks fantastic as well. Let's go to the next one. Up next is the Dragon Rider Twin Blade. Now this one and the Stone Twin Blade are kind of close for me. It's just that one does magic damage and the other one does physical damage. However, the Dragon Rider Twin Blade requires Petrified Dragon Bones to upgrade, as well as there are three other weapons you can get from the Dragon Rider, so it can be a little bit tough to choose, even though you fight that boss twice in a playthrough. Now, this thing weighs 18 units, which is pretty hefty, and it has 120 durability, 25 poise break, 120 counter damage. At 50 strength and dex, I was doing 456 with this weapon, which
which does sound like a lot for a weapon that's hitting this quickly, but that's because of the magic damage. Now, this Twin Blade is pretty good because it has very high just physical damage, but I did find that the Stone Twin Blade was quite comparable to this one, and it's just a little bit less of a hassle to get and play with. However, if you are a sorcerer or you have high intelligence, this thing could potentially be doing more damage for you. Anyways, let's go to the next one, which is the Stone Twin Blade. This weapon can be obtained by the stone soldiers as you're making your way to the Mirror Knight. It weighs 10 units, has 120 durability, 25 poise break, 130 counter damage, and at 50 strength and dex, I was doing 377. Now, this thing is kind of like an upgrade to the normal Twin Blade. It does more damage as well as it has a little bit lower stats to use. Now, the strength is 18, but you can just two-hand it. And this thing does scale with strength. It actually gets an A scaling in strength. However, you are kind of wasting 22 points in dexterity because you only get a D scaling in dex. When you actually play with it though, this thing does comparable damage to the Dragon Rider Twin Blade. So you can use this if you have a build that favors physical damage. However, because of its high damage compared to the normal Twin Blade, I did prefer to use this one uninfused and just use the raw damage of it and maybe poison the normal Twin Blade. I found it quite amazing that these weapons had 25 poise break because I believe the normal R1 hits three times so it's almost impossible not to stagger everything. Even enemies in the DLC were staggered quite easily. The problem with them were just the reach of the weapon so you had to sometimes lock off and angle yourself in a certain way to be able to hit them. But I gotta say I had a lot of fun while getting the footage for these weapons. Okay so the Red Iron Twin Blade. This thing is hands down one of the best weapons in the game. Especially for PvE. So where to start with this? I guess we'll take a look at the stats. It weighs 14 units, has 175 durability, 30 poise break, 120 counter damage, and at 50 strength and dex, I'm doing 514 damage. However, keep in mind that this is a twin blade and it's doing 514 damage, just physical damage as well. It takes 26 strength and 20 dex to use, and it has an A scaling in strength. Let's start off by saying that this is pretty much an ultra greatsword merged with a twin blade. You find it in Shrine of Amana towards the end, and it upgrades with regular Titanite as well. So this thing is one of the best weapons for the DLC bosses who have thick skin, as well as just making your way through the DLC due to the fact that it has so much durability, and it poise breaks like crazy. It does have a little bit of a different moveset compared to the other ones, but one of my favorite attacks is to do the running attack and quickly follow that up with two R1 attacks. The reason you want to use the running attack with this weapon quite a bit is because it closes the distance quickly between you and the enemy, and the normal R1 comes out very quickly afterwards. Now, like with the other twin blades, when you do a light attack, the strong attack comes out even faster, and your character kind of takes a step forward when you do that. So you could do this to close the distance between you and the enemies, as uh, sometimes the enemies will stagger back quite a bit as you're fighting them. The second R2 is like a strong attack from a halberd, but this is quite likely to deplete your stamina, so be careful when you use it, make sure the enemy is fully dead. But one thing, when you do the strong combo with this weapon, and you have it buffed, for example, it is absolutely crazy. I'd say a bit of a weakness to these twin blades when you're fighting bosses is the rolling attack. The rolling attack has to be good on the weapon that you're using because you often tend to roll underneath bosses' attacks and then attack them. Instead of doing the normal R1 after you do a roll, I much prefer to do the strong attack. This does come out pretty quickly and does more damage as well as it's a better attack than the rolling. So yeah, this twin blade is just insane. You could infuse it if you wanted to. It will still do a lot of damage because this weapon can't really be made bad. Maybe don't infuse it with something like poison or bleed, rather with an element or keep it physical. However, this thing is insane in PvP. It can three-shot, two-shot players, depends on what attack you use. The weakness of it in PvP is that it doesn't have a lot of range because you do want to two-hand these twin blades. But if you make a mistake, you miss a parry or something, more than half of your health bar will be gone. In, in some cases, all of it. I found when I wanted to make my way through an area really quickly, I would just use this weapon, use the running attack, follow it up by a light attack, and then finish off the enemy accordingly. If they were too far away from me, I'd do the strong attack. If they weren't, I'd just continue with an R1. This thing just tears through anything that is in its way. It doesn't care whether or not the boss has a lot of armor or something. It doesn't matter. This thing is absurd. Like I mentioned, one of the best weapons in the game. So yeah, that's all for these Twin Blades. They are a very fun class of weapons. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.